Tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami and his um, message. So um, on Saturday was Friday, we um, celebrated the appearance day of Lord Krishna and Saturday we celebrated the appearance day of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who's my teacher's teacher. And he came to the West um, because to, to teach chanting, um, because his spiritual teacher had asked him many, many, many years before, you know, should go to the Western speaking countries and pass on these teachings of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna. And he came in the, in the 60s after like a really horrible boat ride on a freighter. You know, it took over a month and um, the ocean... Three months. Three months? Three months. Three months. Three months. Hellish boat ride. Um, so the sea was really choppy. I mean, a freighter, can you imagine how slow a freighter goes? <laughs> um, anyway, he, he, um, he arrived in, in um, Boston in the wintertime and it was, I mean, I've talked about it a little bit before, and just like horrible, horrible conditions, freezing cold. And, you know, he'd come from an incredibly spiritual place, Vrindavan, where Lord Krishna had his pastimes over 5,000 years ago. You know, and the, the whole atmosphere is just like surcharged with spiritual potency. And so he left there and came to America to a really materialistic, place, the Western society was just like going for it. And, you know, it was kind of like, what am I doing here? How am, how am I going to pass this message on? Could you please get me my phone so I can have a torch? <laughs> it's it's on, the, on the back of the door. Huh. Um, so he, he came with a, a, really, a really simple message. So he came to teach, you know, and you, you sort of can ask, you know, when someone's in their 70s, why would they take a horrendous boat ride and go to a country that you don't know anything about and try and teach them some spiritual knowledge, right? You know, it wasn't like he's after money, thank you, it wasn't after money or fame or anything. Um, you know, just simply to pass on out of love and concern for others pass on a, a message that is so simple and yet so profound that has huge implications for each and every one of us in our daily lives. You know, if we know that, and you know, in the Western world, like if you asked anybody what God is or anything about God is, basically he's a mystery and, you know, don't ask those kind of questions and what's that got to do with anything or, you know, even if you go to the um, spiritual teachers or the religi religious leaders, it can be really hard to get any information that is actually satisfying to our heart if you ask directly about God, right? a mystery or unknowable, you know, different things like that. And so he, he came to teach God is not a mystery, God is knowable, he is a person, you're a person and you're not this body. We're not, I'm not, I'm not a Kiwi, you're not Australian, you're not Indian, you're not black, you're not white. You know, the labels on the body, that's not who we are. We're an eternal spiritual being. And this is not taught anywhere. You know, think Jesus taught it, but apart from that, I don't think you'll hear it anywhere. Jesus taught flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but you can, which means you're not flesh and blood, right? <laughs> but I don't know if many people actually saw that, you know, that, we heard the teaching, but whether it actually registered what that means is another story. So Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami made really clear, you're not this physical body, whatever's going on with the body is not, is not you. Right? You're an eternal spiritual being, you're a person, eternally a person, and God is eternally a person, but he's the supreme soul, we're the little soul. And that we can re-establish a loving relationship with him. One that is actually full of happiness, full of fun, that you can 
play with God as your best friend. You can joke with God. God can be your lover. You can have all sorts of different relationships with God. He's, he's the most unbelievably amazing, sweet and lovable person ever. Right? That's the supreme person. And nobody taught that either, right? That's not taught anywhere. And so he, you know, he brought this simple teaching that is so profound that we can, each one of us, each and every one of us, can reestablish that long lost relationship between us and the Supreme Soul and experience the happiness and the peace and the contentment and, the, and a meaningful life. If we understand that, because then it's like, okay, if I am spirit soul, then, and I'm not, I'm not this body, then just taking care of this body is not enough, right? I need to take care of my spiritual needs, my, my relationship with God. And so I, um, I want to read a little bit from um, Science of Self-Realization. So, you know, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami taught or passed on, wasn't like he made this teaching up. This has been passed on since time immemorial by the great spiritual teachers coming from the Supreme Lord. That the simple process to come to know God is by chanting any of the names of God, but primarily the Hare Krishna mantra, because it is a beautiful prayer that means, my dear Lord, please engage me in your loving service. And each of the words in the Hare Krishna mantra are referring to the very personal and very attractive features of God. So he said, <coughs> when he, um, he wrote in a diary, when he arrived in America, most it was like hippie time, right? and LSD was huge in the area where he, he um, started his chanting movement. So people were thinking they were having some spiritual experience by taking acid and whatever else was going around. <laughs> they just end up being a real mind trips, you know, but people think they're having some cosmic experience. And, um, you know, a material thing, like a tablet <laughs> or a grass of some sort, a weed, whatever, is not going to give you a spiritual experience. A material object is material and it won't give you the soul, a spiritual experience, <clears throat> but it can play with your mind big time. <laughs> so he said, most of the population here is covered by the material modes of ignorance and passion. Passion meaning what drives cities basically. Absorbed in material life, they think themselves very happy and satisfied and therefore they have no taste for the transcendental message of the Supreme Lord. I do not know how they will be able to understand it. But by your causeless mercy, anything is possible. Because when we're too attached to trying to enjoy in this world in some way, we have our own agendas. It's very difficult for us to absorb spiritual knowledge. He said, <clears throat> only by your causeless mercy will my words become pure. I am sure that when this transcendental message penetrates their hearts, they will certainly feel engladdened and thus become liberated from all unhappy conditions of life. All unhappy conditions of life, okay? We experience unhappy conditions in our life on a regular basis. <laughs> you know, all sorts of things happen in our lives that can be like not that fantastic, right? On a daily basis. And so, you know, when we're feeling unhappy, it's like, how do we become free from that? It's like the world's not going how we would like it to go. Circumstances aren't how we would like. But if we can rest in the knowledge, this transcendental knowledge, that I'm actually a spiritual being just temporarily here. And if I can rest my heart in the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita 
in the Hare Krishna mantra, then I will experience understanding from within my heart. I can't create that understanding myself. It comes from God in our heart. And so our heart and mind need to become more purified so that we can hear that transcendental message. And that transcendental message also includes the mantra. So when we're chanting these mantras, for us to actually take them into our heart and absorb them, is we need to make a bit of effort. doesn't need to be a lot, but a bit of effort to actually try and meditate on the sounds of the mantras when we're hearing them and to actually consciously just let go of all the, the worries and concerns that um, may be covering us. You know, there's so many things, like I said. And, you know, spiritual life is really simple. It's really, really uncomplicated. It's just knowing I'm an eternal spiritual being. I am part and parcel of God. I should render service to God and to all living beings in conjunction with the teachings in Bhagavad Gita. And I should rest in the sacred names of God and know that when this body is finished, I can either go back home if my heart and mind are purified enough or Krishna will arrange for me to take on another body in the material world to have a bit more cleansing process go on. <laughs> and um, he will arrange if we've tried in any way at all to understand who we are, our spiritual nature, to understand who God is, any kind of questioning like that. Krishna really appreciates it and he will always help us. So for some of us, you know, we may have L plates on, it may be just a really long, slow process. For some people, they dive in and it's like, this is, I'm going for it, you know. I've, I've heard this, I understand it, and I'm going to make this the focus of my life and then anything in between. <laughs> so we start from wherever we are at and we try and increase our spiritual practices, our chanting of these sacred mantras, and pray, dear Krishna, dear Lord, please engage me in your loving service. Please help me to understand what to do and to make my life more pleasing to you. Thank you.